So you're ready for some brakes on your Impreza, your 17 to 23 Impreza. And you go to the parts store and they ask you, hey, so is your front rotor 277 millimeter or is it 294 millimeters? And if you're like me, you sat there and I was like, uh. So I pulled out my Impreza Limited and we're gonna measure the rotor size and see what the heck size it really is. So I got my tape measure out. I can only measure in inches. We'll do an approximation. Looks like I'm coming up with about 10 and, I don't know, 10 and seven eighths, something like that. How about this? Let's just measure this in, let's convert this. 277 millimeters divided by 25.4. That gives us a 10.9 inch. Hmm, okay. Well, just, just for uh, giggles here, let's do 294, the other rotor size, divided by 25.4, and that one shows it's about 11 and a half inches. A 10 and 7 eighths, somewhere around there. Less than 11, definitely not 11 and a half. I'm going to conclude that all Impreza Limiteds have a 10.9 inch rotor, 277, that smaller one. If the Limited has these smaller rotors that the base and premium, whatever they had these years, has the smaller rotor and that the Sport has must have the bigger 294 millimeter. Uh, don't quote me, I can just tell you what my Limited is right now. Just to be sure, it's a good idea to pull your wheel and measure it quick. It doesn't take too long if you can jack your car up quick. Well, in the meantime, I did find some rotors. And they're supposed to be 277 millimeter. Looks like they're coming up a little less than 11 inches. Putting them on. Well, while you're here, maybe you want to know how the brake calipers come off and the rotor for that matter. Well, there's a couple things you got to do. First, you got to take this caliper off and then you have to remove the bracket. Uh, each one is held together by two bolts. There's two here on your caliper. This also applies to the rear caliper as well. It's just smaller. And then there's going to be a bolt um, on the end of this bracket on the back side of the rotor here and here at the very bottom and very top. Once you do that, um, then you'll have access to your rotor. But once we get to the rotor, you might find out that you can't pull it off very easily. And that's where these two holes come in. They're threaded, and once I get to that point, we'll, we'll dink with that. For the caliper, uh, get yourself, ideally you want a combination wrench with the box end and the open end here. Um, these bolts hold the caliper itself on or 14 millimeter. And then there's going to be the two bolts that hold this bracket off for later. Um, they are 17 millimeter. Use a box end to break it off. And we'll start with this. Let's see. I'm on the opposite side. So I guess from this angle, it's lefty tighty or righty loosey. I don't know. This way. <laughs> Clockwise from the back. Once you get those broken, they should just thread right off um, in most cases, unless you've got some high corrosion going on. Once you break them and just turn them like halfway, um, if things go well, you can just thread them out by hand. Caliper coming off. It'll leave your brake pads behind. And ideally, Wait, if you got some wire or something, it's or a bungee cord, you, you should probably tie this up because you don't want to put tug on your rubber hose because that can damage it. What you can do is hang it from your strut here. In fact, I'm going to go get one. I don't want this dangling. Well, before I tie it up, I'm going to press these caliper pistons in because the new rotor is probably going to have slightly more thickness and you might find that you can't put your caliper back on and it's always good to reset those anyway. Since they're two piston calipers and you need to push them in at the same time, there's special tools for that, but I have a channel lock, quick and dirty here. This will do fine. However, I need to push these both in at the same time, so I can't quite do that. So I need to, here we go. I just need to put something I can press both down at the same time That'll work. See how this goes. If you're in a pinch and you don't want to buy a special caliper tool, you can squeeze it with this channel lock. They're not going in evenly for me, but 
You press them down and you can get to a point where they feel like they stop. You don't need to give it death grip tight. Um, just press them down gently until they're both all the way back. And that's that. Set that aside for now. Tie it up. Suspend this in a way that it's not going to tug on your brake hose back here too much at all. And be out of the way while you're working. Next step. So your pads will slide right out of this. Should in theory slide right back out. These pads are brand new because see what I did. I needed I needed pads. Well, I left the stock rotor. This is the stock rotor. And once I changed these pads and took it out on the highway afterwards, I discover I have a pretty bad shake and my wheels are balanced and that leaves pretty much that the rotor has a warp in it. And I don't know how that works, but I didn't feel the warp whatsoever until I changed these pads. Well, after 70,000 miles, it has probably got a little bit of a warp in there. And really, as much as it costs to resurface these things, um, at a dealer, for instance, or mechanic shop, what have you, it's better off. You might as well just buy the rotors anyway. In fact, I wonder if this isn't the warp here. You see these kind of burn marks along the side? They're faint, but they're there. I can see them in my, in my eyes anyway. And that very well could be the cause of the warp. Don't forget your back pad like I almost did. Set those aside. I'll actually leave these little uh, doohickeys in here that your uh, pad slide against. And when you go to do your pads, you'll you'll get new uh, brackets or these little uh, sliders, whatever whatever they're called. I can't think of it right now. Replace those when you do the pads too. I mean, you, you they come with the kit usually. You might as well just change them. Okay, from the back, righty Lucy. Had a major malfunction. Back to it. Righty Lucy from the front. Holy crap, those are on there good. Hey man, it can't always go smoothly. So I brought my pal with me, the hammer. Sheesh, that's never been off. Now if this one will just cooperate, we'll be in business. While this caliper bracket is off, this would be a good time to check to see if your slide pins still slide properly. Um, they'll move somewhat freely. And if they're kind of chunky when you're moving them, it's probably time to change them out because uh, that means water got in there, corrosion. Um, good news is that most parts stores should have the slide pin kit, which should have uh, the pin, which is also what the caliper bolts into. And it should come with these boots and whatever lube is needed to uh, grease up inside there. Now, let's figure this rotor out. I bet it's not going to come off if I try. I guess while well, I got the hammer here. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Found two bolts. I don't know if they're metric yet. I think they are. They're at least, they at least match each other, same diameter. They look a little too big for these holes, but I'm going to try anyway. Nope. Feels good. Best results, shoot some lube or something on them. I got some rust inhibitor. I should probably put it in there. Lube will be good for this particular case. I uh, probably wouldn't hurt to shoot around this uh, this hub ring here too. Um, that's separate from the rotor itself. Just to aid in loosening, but I'm just gonna wing it like this. You can try this dry, but like I said, you're gonna have better luck if you lube it with something. Crank one down and then alternate between the two so it comes off evenly. So I'll start it. It is moving. That's good. There we go. It might just come off on the next go around. There you are. That's how you take that off. And if you didn't stretch those uh, bolts out, you can take them out and reuse them on the other rotor. If not, go find two more bolts. Double check this rotor size. Good enough for me. I put on gloves. I don't want to get my grease all over my brake rotors. However, regardless of having no grease on my hands, get some brake cleaner. 
shoot those uh, pad surfaces. Oopsie daisies. Now, you can reverse the process from this point. Put your bracket on. If you want to double check, make sure your sliders are still working, now's the time. Bolt this on. Good and snug. You know, I don't have any, any torque specs for you. Um, just get her good and snug. Doesn't need to be like absolute death grip. Get them tight. And then check them one more time. And you're good to go. Put these fellas back on. Back one's tricky when you can't see back there. If you didn't press in your caliper pistons already, be sure to do so and try to press them in as slowly and evenly as possible. Um, you, you'll find that if you do them one at a time, you press one down, it'll shoot the other one out a little bit, and then you gotta fumble with that. Okay, from there you can put the bolt spin. Get one started, start the other one. And you can hand thread those in just like you threaded them out as you broke them. These ones don't need to be quite as death grip tight. We'll say medium snugness. That's good. That's good too. Okay, pads are in place, calipers on, brackets secured. Get your bungee out of the way, or wire. Ready to bolt your wheel? Well, you should probably do this one more time because like me, I got grease on them. Where's my juice? And if you can hit the back side of that rotor, good luck. <laughs> and there we go, brake job. Now we're almost done. After I do the other side and you're all bolted up, ready to go, keep in mind, you do not want to take your car anywhere until you do one very important step. Since we messed with uh, pressing the caliper pistons in, well, they're not going to be pressing against the brake pads right now. So what you need to do is start your car. This will make it easier, by the way. Start and run the car. Then put your foot on the brake and press it down. You're going to find it's really soft and squishy because it's not really doing anything yet. Give it a few pumps until it feels good and firm like it used to. That means your caliper pistons are filled with brake fluid again and it's ready to go, ready to roll after that. Then take it out for a spin. So don't, don't go throwing it in drive right away and take it off. Pump your brakes down after the brake job. Summary on the front brake job and an addendum to the rear brakes. So the front for tools you will need 14 millimeter to take your caliper itself off. You'll need to find something to suspend this up on the suspension, ideally. This is somewhere where you're not going to kink and pull on the hose because being rubber like that you can damage it. Now for the caliper bracket you need to get a 17 millimeter and I'll take that off. For the rotor, you need to find a couple of metric bolts at the hardware store, what have you. If you've got a parts, parts bin somewhere, thread them in there and tighten them down a little bit at a time. You'll start to see it move against this uh, hub face, this hub ring, I guess. Do it so it pulls off evenly for you. Now, the same goes with the back wheels. It's going to be more or less set up the same, except they use a one-piston caliper on the rear, which will actually make it easier for when you press in that piston. Um, don't have to deal with uh, pressing two down at the same time. Um, you can use that same channel lock pliers like I was using. Um, you just you know, press it in gently and evenly. Don't force it and press, press it all the way in. It works just the same as the front caliper, just smaller. On the rear, to take that caliper off is 14 millimeter again. And if you need to do a rotor back there uh, to take this caliper bracket off the back, it too is a 14 millimeter. A little bit simpler in that sense, same principle. Remember, when you put it all together, pump your brakes down, get them good and firm again, and then take it out for a spin. And that's more or less it. I hope this helps you. If you came for nothing else, at least now you know the rotor size. Base model, limiteds, anything but the Sport has the smaller 277 millimeter rotor. Uh, the Sport is the one I believe has the 294. 
And there you go, brake jobs aren't too difficult, um, given that it's not all corroded out on you. Good luck to you. I mean, use, use some uh, rust inhibitor or WD-40, something to loosen up um, where bolts are. Anywhere you use any kind of lubricant, use your brake cleaner and clean off anything because, yeah, grease and brakes, no bueno. Appreciate you watching. So now we know what our rotor size is now, huh?